Hello everybody. Hope you all are well. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic, which is intellectual skills. So today our topic is mechanisms of rescue. Right? Mechanism of respiration. Now all of you know that respiration it involves a series of cycles and each cycle consists of two phases inspiration and expiration now inspiration inspiration is an active process okay so inspiration is an active process that means it needs contraction of inspiratory muscle active participation of inspiratory muscle and it lasts for 1 second whereas expiration is passive process in normal breathing normal breathing or quiet breathing expiration is passive process that means it does not require contraction of any muscle it occurs due to elastic recoiling of lung and it lasts for 3 seconds but in case of forceful expiration there must be participation of some muscles okay we will see it now what is the normal respiratory rate for adult it is 16 to 20 per minute in case of adult whereas in children it is a little bit higher it is about 25 to 30 per minute and in neonate it is 30 to 40 per minute okay now let's consider what are the muscles of inspiration and expiration first the muscles of inspiration the main muscle or the key muscle of inspiration is the diaphragm okay so main inspiratory muscle inspiration main inspiratory muscle is the diaphragm now we will consider the function of the diaphragm a little bit later first we are enumerating the names of the muscles second important muscle that is intercostal muscle intercostal muscle now these two muscle diaphragm and intercostal muscles these are acting in case of quiet breathing normal breathing they are mainly acting okay now what are the muscles those are acting in case of deep inspiration or forceful inspiration so there are some extra muscles in deep inspiration erector spiny group of muscle it comes into play also sternocleidomastoid and scalene group of muscle they also comes into play in case of deep inspiration okay and in case of forceful inspiration there are pectoral group of muscle pectoral group of muscle and serratus anterior muscle they comes into play forceful inspiration so what are the muscles you have got diaphragm and intercostal muscle in normal inspiration erector spiny sternocleidomastoid and scalene group of muscle in deep inspiration and pectoral group of muscles serratus anterior in forceful inspiration now what are the muscles of expiration as i told you it is a passive process so for normal expiration no muscle is required it is done by elastic recoiling of lung however in case of deep expiration or forceful expiration the abdominal muscles three flat muscles of abdomen so those are external oblique internal oblique transversus abdominis as well as rectus abdominis these muscles helps in case of inspiration and there are another muscle that is latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi this muscle also helps in inspiration here in the inspiration i have missed one muscle that is also important that is quadratus lumborum okay quadratus lumborum so these are the muscles of inspiration and expiration now let's see the mechanism first we will consider the mechanism of the diaphragm 
before going to that i would like to say one thing suppose there is a box thoracic cavity is often compared with a box you know a box it has three dimension suppose this is a box okay this is a box now you know it has three dimension like it has height it has length and it has breadth thoracic cavity is compared with this box so this is thoracic cavity and here is diaphragm this is diaphragm so it is like the box now this is height this is length and this is breadth if any one dimension is increased say the height is increased or the length is increased or the breadth is increased the volume of the box will be increased okay so it will be compared to the thoracic cavity so in case of thoracic cavity if the height is increased or the length that means the transverse diameter is increased or the anterior posterior diameter if increased then the volume of the thoracic cavity will increase okay now let's consider the function of the diaphragm as i told you diaphragm is the key muscle and in case of neonate the diaphragm is the only muscle of respiration inspiration because the in infant the ribs are horizontally placed in adult the ribs are oblique suppose my fingers are ribs and these are obliquely placed in case of adult but in in infant the ribs are horizontal so intercostal muscles they actually are not functioning as inspiratory muscle mainly diaphragm is the main muscle that's why in infant the respiration or inspiration is abdominal abdominal and in case of adult that is thoraco abdominal okay now let's see how the diaphragm functions before that we have to know the how the diaphragm is situated so diaphragm is a musculo aponeurotic partition between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity and it has a wide range of origin it is like this paper circumferential and it has a circumferential origin that means if this is the posterior part this is the anterior part and these are the sides anteriorly there will be sternum posteriorly there will be vertebra and by the side there will be ribs diaphragm is taking origin from all these structures it is arising from the posterior part of xiphoid process it is arising from the lower six ribs and as well as it is arising from the lumbar vertebra upper three lumbar vertebra so it has a wide range of origin and the fibers are going midway okay to be inserted in a tendon that is called central tendon so let's have a drawing showing the origin of the diaphragm so suppose i am watching or viewing the diaphragm from the abdominal side this is the anterior side this is the posterior side now here is the xiphoid sternum and behind there will be vertebra and this is our rib cage okay so diaphragm is originating from all these structures from the xiphoid sternum it is arising like this here will be lower six ribs as i told you so 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 both side 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 lower six ribs so diaphragm is originating from the inner surface of the inner surface of the lower six ribs okay so this is the origin of the diaphragm and it is also arising posteriorly from to crush this is from the vertebral body upper three lumbar vertebra in case of right side and in case this is right side this is left side so right side it is arising from body of upper three lumbar vertebra left side upper two lumbar vertebra this is called crush or trula of diaphragm these two and there are again two ligament that is called medial arcuate ligament and lateral arcuate ligament 
So diaphragm it is originating this circumferential way. Okay. And all the fibers, they are going middle to be inserted in a trifoil structure, leaf-like trifoil structure that is called central tendon. So here is a leaf-like trifoil structure that is called central tendon. So this is the diaphragm. Now in the center, the diaphragm, in the center, there is, the, the height of the diaphragm is much more. That is forming dome of diaphragm. There is two dome, right dome and left dome of diaphragm. When diaphragm is relaxed, when diaphragm is relaxed, you can see this is right dome, this is left dome of diaphragm. When diaphragm is relaxed, this dome are within this thoracic cavity. So they reach a height. They reach a height in the thoracic cavity. Okay. Here, diaphragm is relaxed. Now, when the inspiration starts, that means diaphragm contracting, it starts to contract. So first, what is happening? First, diaphragm is contracting in the middle at the region of the central tendon. The peripheral part, that means the ribs, the origin from the ribs, this portion is fixed. This part is fixed and centrally it is contracting. As it is contracting centrally, so what will happen? This dome or cupola, this will descend. There will be descent of the dome of the diaphragm. It will be flattened like this. It will be flattened like this. So you can easily appreciate that there will be increase in height of the thoracic cavity. As the height of the thoracic cavity increases, there will be increase in volume. Okay. And basically diaphragm increases the height, the anteroposterior diameter as well as the transverse diameter. Three diameters are increased due to contraction of diaphragm. But in the first phase, we have seen that it is increasing the height. Because at the region of the central tendon is contracting and there is descent of the dome of diaphragm. Now, normally diaphragm descent, normal breathing diaphragm descent for 1.5 cm. Right? In case of forceful inspiration, it can descend from 6 to 10 cm. Now, assume in normal condition, diaphragm descends 1.5 cm. And what is the area of the diaphragm that is about 270 square meter okay so what amount of air is drawn into the thoracic cavity or lung due to 1.5 centimeter descent of diaphragm that is 270 into 1.5 that means 405 cc or 405 ml now what is the tidal volume what do you mean by tidal volume? Tidal volume is the amount of air that is drawn in or that is exhaling due to normal respiration. Okay, that is taken in or that is going out due to normal respiration. So, see, among this 500 ml of tidal volume, 400 cc or 400 ml is um, 400 ml comes from only by the descent of diaphragm. Now, when the normal inspiration is progressing, that means in the later phase, what happens? As the diaphragm is descending, as the diaphragm, the dome of the diaphragm is descending, it will press on the abdominal viscera. Abdominal viscera will bulge. So, there will be bulging of the anterior abdominal wall. As the limit is reached, the forward bulging of the anterior abdominal wall, the limit is reached, there will be no more descent of the dome of the diaphragm. Then what will happen? The central portion becomes fixed and the peripheral portion becomes contracting. In the peripheral portions, what are the structures attached? This is the ribs. So when the peripheral part starts contracting, the ribs are going outward. So the ribs are going outward. Okay. They are by Increasing the transverse as well as the anterior posterior diameter. Thus, diaphragm is functioning by increasing both height, transverse and anterior posterior diameter. You have to keep this in mind. Okay. And the diaphragm, not only 
the diaphragm the function of the diaphragm depends upon this factor also the function of the diaphragm depends upon the upon the posture that means when a person is standing or when the person is uh, lying down or when a person is sitting position at all this phase diaphragm is not acting similarly as the inspiratory muscle when a person is lying down let's see when a person is lying down then what will happen when a person is lying down then the height of the diaphragm in the thoracic cavity that is highest more the height of the diaphragm more will be the excursion by the diaphragm and best action of the diaphragm we get okay it will act best as respiratory inspiratory muscle so see when a person is lying what will happen suppose a person is lying on the bed now what will happen so here i told you the dome of the diaphragm is much more the height of the dome of the diaphragm is much more so it will go a more excursion so much more volume of air will be taken by the lung so it will act as best respiratory inspiratory muscle in case of supine position specially supine position and the legs are on a upper level okay foot foot end um, foot end is elevated level next is suppose a patient who is having lung disease then we have seen that uh, if the person is dysphagic or has respiratory distress he will be comfortable when he is sitting and leaning forward why because at this position the height of the diaphragm will be less and diaphragm will go under less excursion less action so the person will get relief so here the diaphragm will act as least inspiratory muscle suppose the person is in sitting posture so his abdomen is relaxed and the diaphragm is relaxed okay so diaphragm height of the diaphragm is much less and in this position the diaphragm will act as least respiratory muscle okay so this is the position where the person will get comfort now we have also seen that suppose a person having a lung disease of right side so if he lies on the left side then he will get relief why because when a person is lying on the bed on one side then what is happening when a person is lying on the bed on one side what is happening the two domes of diaphragm is not of equal height so the person who is lying suppose the person is lying on the right side right dome of diaphragm will be at a much higher level and the left dome will be at a lower level so right dome will will undergo more excursion so this side lung undergo more work has to be uh, done more work so that's why the person has to lie on the left side to give relief to the right lung okay so this is the some explanation where the function of the diaphragm is related to posture and this movement of the diaphragm this up down movement this is known as the piston movement this is known as the piston movement of diaphragm so this is all about our diaphragm so next we switch over to the next muscle that is the intercostal muscle you know intercostal muscle there are mainly two intercostal muscles two types of intercostal muscles that is intercostal is external and intercostal is internus now external intercostal external intercostal this is an inspiratory muscle and internal intercostal that is actually an expiratory muscle now to understand this function of the intercostal muscle we have to know the direction of the fiber of the intercostal muscles external intercostal the direction of the fiber is downward and medially okay downward and medially so when this muscle contract the rib will be elevated and the movement of the ribs will be outward and upward right whereas the internal intercostal its direction is downward and laterally 
So when this muscle will contract, the ribs will be depressed. So external intercostal, this is a muscle of inspiration and internal intercostal, that is a muscle of expiration. Now, we will see how the muscles acts on the ribs and the vertebra. Here, you know, there are upper ribs and we can divide the ribs into upper and the lower. Okay. From the first to say sixth rib, this is the upper ribs and 7, 8, 9, 10, these are the lower ribs. So the mechanism of action or this mechanism of inspiration is a little bit different in these two, two levels of ribs. For upper ribs, what is happening? For this, we have to understand this figure. So suppose, suppose this is the vertebra. Okay. This is our vertebra. So this is the posterior aspect. Anteriorly, there will be sternum. Anteriorly, there will be sternum. Now, here is ribs. So, ribs are attached to the vertebral body, we know, by its head and to the transverse process by the tubercle, right? So, they are attached to the vertebral body by the head and the transverse process by the tubercle. And there is the costal cartilage. Near the sternum, there is the costal cartilage. So, this is the costal cartilage. Similarly, this side you can draw so this is our right sided rib this is the costal cartilage now see upper ribs in case of upper ribs what is happening in case of upper ribs the upper ribs moves along a oblique axis along a oblique axis and the axis is passing through the axis is passing through the costo transverse joint costo vertebral joint of one side then it crosses the midline and passes through the contralateral side so this is the axis in case of upper ribs it passes through the costo vertebral joint costo transverse joint costo vertebral joint crosses the midline and goes through the contralateral costochondral junction. So, for this right side, what is the direction of the external intercostal? The direction of the external intercostal is downward and medially. Right? Agree? What is the direction? So, this is your right side, this is your left side. Sorry. So, left side, the External intercostal, the direction is downward medially. Okay. And what is the direction of the internal intercostal on the right side? So it is downward and laterally. So the direction is like this. So you can see the direction of the external intercostal of one side. And this part is known as the interchondral part. Interchondral part of the internal intercostal is same. Okay. So they function along this oblique axis. They function along this oblique axis. And when this external intercostal is contracting, what is happening? The ribs going outward and upward. Thereby, they are pushing the sternum forward. So there will be a pump handle type of movement. A pump handle type of movement. Pump handle type of movement. And here, what diameter is increasing? As the ribs are going outward, upward and pushing the sternum, manubrium sterni and the sternum forward. So, there is increase of the anteroposterior diameter. And the volume is increased. But, what happens in case of the lower rib cage? Here, the figure will be different. How? See, here the axis will be changed. The axis will be changed. And the axis will be Axis will not cross the midline, rather it passes through the costovertebral joint and the sternocostal joint. So this line, this axis passes through the costovertebral joint and sternocostal joint. Because what happens in case of lower ribs? Upper ribs going downward forward. In case of lower ribs,
leaves, they are also going downward forward. But when they are coming front, the costal cartilage, what are the direction of the costal cartilage? They are going upward and medially. Okay. So the lower ribs, they are actually fixed anteriorly and posteriorly and they are at a higher level. In the middle, they are at a lower level. Okay. So here the axis is anteroposterior, not oblique. And when the intercostal muscles are contracting, the ribs are going like this way. The two ends are fixed. The ribs are going outward, upward, but in the middle part of the rib goes this way. So this is a this is a bucket handle movement. It is called a bucket handle movement. Okay. And here which diameter is increasing? As the middle part of the rib is going outward, upward. So the transverse diameter is increasing. So that is the difference. In case of upper ribs, the movement is called pump handle movement. And here the anteroposterior diameter is increasing. But in lower rib cage, the ribs are actually increasing the contraction of the intercostal muscle in case of lower rib cage the transverse diameter is increasing and which is called a bucket handed movement okay so understand so intercostal muscle the functions of the external intercostal muscles they act like this way and internal intercostal they are actually depressing the ribs and thereby they are acting as expiratory muscle okay so this is the main two muscles and what are the other muscles which are actually helping in our deep inspiration that is erector spiny group of muscles you know that is a back muscle so when they are contracting they are actually spreading the ribs thereby increasing the diameter thoracic diameter as well as see sternocleidomastoid here and scalene group of muscle so sternocleidomastoid it is attached to clavicle and the sternum as well as it is attached above Okay, mastoid process. So when this is contracting, actually it is elevating the clavicle and some and the scalene group of muscle, they are attached to first rib and second rib. So when they are contracting, they are elevating the first and second rib. In quiet inspiration, first and second rib, they actually don't move. In first rib, don't move actually. But in deep inspiration, the scalene group of muscle, they elevate the first rib. So they are actually acting in case of deep inspiration. In case of forceful inspiration again this pectoral group of muscle and serratus anterior they come into play. Okay and what about the expiratory muscle? Expiratory muscle at the abdominal muscle. So when these three flat muscles of the abdomen contracting then they are actually pushing the diaphragm above. Okay so pushing the diaphragm above and therefore the air from the lung is exhaled and also latissimus dorsi it is also an expiratory muscle when it is contracting it is compressing the thoracic cavity from behind and thereby helps in exhaling the air okay so this is in nutshell all about mechanism of respiration thank you stay safe if you like my video then please subscribe and if you have anything to know please write it in the comment section